Hello, in this video we're going to be learning about oxidation reduction reactions. So what are oxidation reduction reactions? They're types of reactions that involve the transfer of one or more electrons between two species. Oxidation reduction reactions are also called redox reactions. So in oxidation reduction reactions, the element that has a higher tendency to lose electrons which usually is the metal, because metals like to give up electrons, combines with an element that has a greater tendency to gain an electron, usually the non-metal. So metals usually transfer an electron to a non-metal. Oxidation is loss of electron. Reduction is gain of electron. So the substance that loses an electron is oxidized, and the substance that gains an electron is reduced. So a good way to remember is oil rig, oxidation is loss, rig, reduction is gain. Here's an example of a oxidation reduction reaction. Here we have a sodium that has a charge of zero as a free element, but then as a compound, it becomes plus one. So it lost an electron and therefore it is oxidized. The chlorine here has a charge of zero because it's a free element. And here in NaCl as a compound, it has a charge of minus one. Going from zero to minus one is gain of electron so the chlorine was reduced. Here's a diagram to show it. So we have a sulfur here and we have two silvers. And these electrons that belong to the silver are going to be transferred to the sulfide or the sulfur, making it a sulfide. So the S becomes two minus because it gained two electron. And each of the silvers become plus one because they lost an electron each. So this is oxidation reduction reaction. The silver was oxidized because it lost the electron. The sulfur is reduced because it gained electrons. All right, now we're going to be looking at oxidation state. Oxidation state is also called oxidation number and it's kind of just a fancy word for charge. So oxidation state is a number that's used in helping us write formulas and balance the equation. It's a number that we assign to elements that represents how many electrons have either been gained or lost by an atom of that element in a compound. All right, so now we're going to look at rules for assigning oxidation state. The first rule is that the oxidation state of an atom in a free element is zero. A free element is just an element that occurs by itself and is not in a compound. So here, for example, the sodium has an oxidation state of zero. There's no charge shown. The sodium is all by itself, so its oxidation state is zero. Here, Cl2 is a free element because it's not a compound, it's just one element that's shown here. There is no charge shown, so the oxidation state of each of those chlorines in Cl2 is zero. Both sodium here in this example and the Cl2 are free elements. The next rule is that the oxidation state of a monoatomic ion is equal to its charge. So a monoatomic ion is an ion that's made up of just one element or one atom of an element by itself. Whatever charge is shown is the oxidation state of that ion. So here, for example, the Na has a charge of plus one. That means that the oxidation state of Na here is plus one. Likewise, in this example, the Cl has an oxidation state of minus one because the charge that's shown here is Cl minus, so it's minus one. The next rule is 
is that the sum of the oxidation state of all the atoms in a neutral molecule or formula unit is zero. So what this means is that anytime we have a compound, for example, whether it's a molecule or a formula unit, the charge of all those atoms added up together is zero. So in this example here, the sum of the oxidation states of the two hydrogens plus the oxygen is zero because there's no charge shown and overall H2O is a neutral molecule. The next rule is, is that the sum of the oxidation state of all the atoms in a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge of the ion. So unlike monoatomic ions, polyatomic ions are made of, of multiple elements bonded together and a charge is given for all of those atoms. So in this example here, the oxidation state of the sulfur plus the four oxygens is equal to negative two, right? Because the charge that's shown is negative two. The next rule is that as compounds, metals and nonmetals are assigned oxidation states according to this table below where entries on top have priority. So group one and group two have the highest priority of all. They take priority over all other nonmetals and all other metals. This means that group one always wants to have an oxidation state of plus one, and group two always wants to have an oxidation state of plus two. For nonmetals, which have a lower priority than group one and group two metals, the highest priority nonmetal is fluorine, which would like to have a charge of negative one, followed by hydrogen plus one, followed by oxygen minus two, then group seven A minus one, group six A minus two, and group five A minus three. So we assign oxidation state in this order with the metals of group 1A and 2A first, followed in this order by the nonmetals. Anything that is not shown here, which includes the transition metals, has the least priority in being assigned an oxidation state. And then if a compound contains a polyatomic ion, before assigning any oxidation state, first separate the polyatomic ion into its individual or from the rest of the molecule into ions before assigning oxidation state. All right, so let's go ahead and perform these problems together. Assign oxidation state to each of the ions or atoms in each structure. So we're gonna be using this table to assign oxidation state to each of the atoms in here. So we'll start with H2O. From this table over here, we can see that hydrogen takes priority over oxygen. Hydrogen wants to be plus one, oxygen wants to be minus two. So when we assign oxidation state to the atoms or ions in each of the compounds, we assign oxidation state based on the priority given here for every single element except the very last one. The very last one is not based off of the table. The very last one is responsible for making the charge of the entire compound whatever is shown. So if the charge that's shown is zero, then that last atom, the one with the least priority, will be assigned a charge that will make the entire compound, for example, zero. So let's start with H2O. According to our table, hydrogen takes priority. So in this example, we give hydrogen a plus one. So hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. There are two hydrogens, together they make plus two. In order to make this entire compound neutral, as it's shown, the oxygen has to be minus two. There's only one oxygen present, so that oxygen has an oxidation state of negative two. So our hydrogen's oxidation state is plus one, not plus two, plus one, oxygen minus two. 
Now let's look at H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Again, according to our table, the hydrogen takes priority. So the hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. There are two hydrogens. Together they make plus two. The entire compound is neutral. So these two oxygens together have to be negative two. Since there's two of them, it means that each oxygen has an oxidation state of negative one. Notice that this oxidation state of negative one for oxygen does not match what is given in the table. But again, remember that the, the element with the least priority in each compound does not go off of the table. It goes off of the rule that the charge or the sum of the charge of all the atoms or ions has to equal to the charge of what is shown in this case, zero. Okay. Now let's look at MnCl2. So manganese is not shown anywhere in this table. Chlorine is in group 7A and it wants to have a charge of negative one. So chlorine has an oxidation state of negative one. There are two chlorines present. Together they make negative two. Since the entire compound is neutral, the manganese has to be plus two in order to balance it. So there's one manganese present, that manganese has an oxidation state of plus two. So I'm gonna circle the oxidation state for each problem so that you know which ones they are. They're the ones I drew on the bottom. And then for the last one, we need to find the oxidation state of the iron, the sulfur, and the oxygen. So remember the rule is that if there is a polyatomic ion present, which in this case we have the sulfate present, we first break apart the polyatomic ion. So the sulfate has a negative two charge, which makes the iron have a positive two charge. So we know that the iron has an oxidation state of plus two or two plus, and the sulfate has an oxidation state of two minus, right? Because that's what the oxidation state of sulfate is. It's a polyatomic ion. So we've already found the iron. We said that its oxidation state is plus two. Now we need to find the sulfur and the oxygen. On our table here, you can see that oxygen takes priority over sulfur. Oxygen is here as minus two. It's above sulfur, which is in group 6A. So we assign oxygen an oxidation state of negative two. So this oxygen here is negative two, its oxidation state. There are four oxygens, together they make negative eight. The charge of the entire ion is negative two. That means each sulfur has to be plus six. So that positive six minus eight gives us negative two. So the sulfur has an oxidation state of plus six. Another way to write this is that the sulfur plus four times oxygen is equal to negative two, right? That's the charge of the sulfate. The oxygen from the table is negative two. So sulfur plus four times negative two is negative eight equals negative two. I add eight to both sides, and that gives me that the sulfur is six, or positive six as its oxidation state. So once again, assign all the oxidation state from this table, the one with the least priority, you do not go off of the table. You go off of the charge of either the ion, the polyatomic ion, or the compound. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the equation that we looked at at the beginning of this lecture, where we had two sodiums plus the chlorine giving two sodium chlorides. And what we said here was that the sodium loses electron, right, because it's zero here, becomes plus one here, so it's oxidized, while the chlorine gains an electron, so it's reduced. So notice that oxidation and reduction have to occur together. 
something has to lose an electron for another thing to gain that electron. So what we see in this reaction is that the sodium is causing the reduction of the chlorine. So the sodium itself is oxidized, but it's responsible for the reduction of chlorine. Because if sodium didn't lose that electron, chlorine would not become reduced. Likewise, chlorine causes the oxidation of sodium. If chlorine wasn't there to accept the electron, then sodium would not be oxidized. So now we're going to define two terms, reducing agent and oxidizing agent. The reducing agent is the substance that causes the reduction of another substance. So the reducing agent, it itself contains the atom that becomes oxidized. The reducing and oxidizing agent are always from the reactant side. The oxidizing agent is the substance that causes the oxidation of another substance, and it contains the atom that was reduced. And again, it's always on the reactant side. So in this example over here, the sodium was oxidized, so it is the reducing agent. The chlorine was reduced, so Cl2 is the oxidizing agent. Remember that the reducing and oxidizing agent are the entire substance on the left side. It's not just the element necessarily. If it's a compound, then it's the entire compound. So here in this example, Ag is converted to Ag plus. So Ag is oxidized, which means that it's the reducing agent. Right, because it caused the reduction of the sulfur. So the sulfur was reduced, so it's the sulfur is the oxidizing agent. Again, notice that the reducing and oxidizing agents are from the reactant side. The oxidizing agent contains the reduced element. Okay. Here's another example. What we see here is sodium chloride plus iodide to give sodium iodide plus chlorine. And notice that the chlorine here goes from minus one on the reactant side to zero on the product side, because on the product side, it's a free element. So the chlorine is oxidized. The I, on the other hand, goes from a charge of zero on the reactant side, because it's a free element, to a charge of minus one on the product side. So the I is reduced. The reduced element, which is I, is part of the oxidizing agent. So I too is the oxidizing agent. And NaCl, the entire compound, not the prefix two, not the coefficient two, but NaCl is the reducing agent because it contains the oxidized element, which is the chlorine. So once again, the reducing and oxidizing agent are the entire substance on the reactant side. The reducing agent contains the oxidized element, and the oxidizing agent contains the reduced element. All right, so we're gonna go over a problem together. We're going to find the oxidation state of each of the elements in a compound. And then we're going to determine the element that's oxidized, the one that's reduced, the oxidizing agent, and the reducing agent. So we're going to use, use this table here to figure out the answers. So first, we're going to start off with FeCl3. So in FeCl3, the chlorine is in group 7A. The iron, the Fe, does not appear on this table, so it has the least priority, which means that I'm first going to assign oxidation state to the chlorine. And since it's in group 7A, it wants to have an oxidation state of minus 1. So chlorine has an oxidation state of minus 1. There are three chlorines here. Together, they make minus 3. 
since the entire FeCl3 compound is neutral, that means that the Fe has an oxidation state of plus 3. Okay, so I'm putting the oxidation states at the bottom. Notice that we do not care about this 2 over here. That is the coefficient. When we assign oxidation states, we do not look at the coefficients. Okay, here H2 is a free element because it occurs all by itself, so its oxidation state is zero. On the right side of the equation, again, we have iron with chlorine. According to the table, the chlorine wants to have a charge of minus one. Since the iron has lower priority, the charge of the iron is determined based on the charge of the entire compound. Two chlorines together make minus two. That means this iron has to be plus two for the FeCl2 to be neutral. So the Fe here has a charge or oxidation state of plus two. And then HCl, notice that on this table, the hydrogen has priority over the chlorine. Chlorine is in group 7A. Hydrogen takes priority, so what we're going to do is assign oxidation state of plus 1 to the hydrogen. And since there's only one chlorine, the entire substance is neutral. That means the chlorine is minus 1, okay? which happens to be what the table says, but that does not always happen. So we can see here that the iron went from a charge of plus 3 to plus 2. Nothing happened to the chlorine. The chlorine is at minus one in all the cases, and the hydrogen went from a zero to a plus one. So iron, which went from a charge of plus three to plus two, it means that it gained an electron, so the iron was reduced, right? Because it became lower. The hydrogen went from a charge of zero to a charge of plus one, which means that it lost an electron because it became more positive, so it was oxidized. And then remember that the oxidizing agent contains the reduced element. The reduced element is iron. So the oxidizing agent is FeCl2. So FeCl or FeCl3 is the oxidizing agent. The reducing agent contains the oxidized element. Hydrogen is the oxidized element. So H2 is the reducing agent. Okay, remember that the agents are always from the reactant side and it's the entire reactant. All right, so here's a practice problem for you to attempt on your own. You can just pause this, perform this, and then on the next slide, you can look at the answer. And here is the answer to this problem.